Hello everyone, my name is Aubrey Vivant and I am a content producer and honors apprentice at the Planetarium at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. This is the first webisode of Creatures and Cosmos. Through this series, we're going to look at some of the strangest animals that roam the Earth as well as their celestial equivalents up in space. For today, we'll just be looking at the Northern Hemisphere so you can find all of these celestial bodies on your own outside. For this series, we'll be breaking all of our animals into four categories. Things that fly, things that swim, things that walk, and things that either look or are mythological. We will be starting today with things that fly. Our first creature today is the Huatzin. Huatzin live deep in the Amazon and at first glance seem to be your average bird. And for the most part, they are. However, mother Huatzins build their nests out on branches that extend over water. This way, when a snake or other predator is approaching, the mother flings her chicks out into the river or pond and flees. This may seem brutal if you aren't aware about what makes these birds so strange. Watson have small claws at the end of their wings that they use to climb back up to safety after the predator has vacated the nest. Birds with claws used to be much more common, but as the need for them decreased in most species, they were eventually bred out of existence. These birds are also known as stink birds due to their complex, multi-chambered stomachs, most similar to cows. Watsons are actually the only birds in the world who eat nothing but leaves, which is very hard on their digestive systems, and produces lots of methane, hence the smell. Next up, we have a much scarier creature. This is the Australian megabat, also known as the flying fox. Besides being legitimate nightmare fuel, these animals are part of Australia's collection of megafauna. Thankfully, they only eat fruits and nectar, and they actually serve as some of the world's largest pollinators. To me, that's slightly comforting, but I don't think I can ever fully relax again after seeing these. Despite weighing less than four pounds, they actually can have a wingspan of six feet. There are 13 species of Megochiropter, eight of which are flying foxes. Flying foxes usually live in colonies with populations up to 100,000. Our third creature today is the blue-footed booby. These birds get their name from the Spanish word bobo, which means stupid or foolish. This may seem kind of mean, but it is in reference to the mating dance these birds perform to attract a mate, which is what you're watching now. Much like in other birds, the bright colors of the males is what attracts females, so the brighter the feet, the more attractive the mate. Their blue color comes from the carotenoid pigments that they consume as part of their diet of mostly fish, in the waters surrounding the Galapagos Islands and Central America where these birds live. Our fourth and final flyer of the day is the Atlas Moth. These ornate moths are absolutely huge when compared to other species of moths and butterflies, with a wingspan up to 12 inches in diameter. The caterpillars live for about 5 to 7 weeks, gradually growing larger until they are large enough and in a comfortable enough position to cocoon. They will hatch in about a month and then live as adult moths for only 5 to 14 days. During these 5 to 14 days, the females will lay 150 to 300 eggs and the cycle will repeat. These moths are common in Asia and are popular in Thailand where the silk cocoons are collected after metamorphosis and converted into purses to be sold at markets. Next, we will transition into our creatures of flight in the night sky. For this portion of the program, I will be using the desktop version of an application called Stellarium, so feel free to look up these constellations for yourself after the presentation. Our first constellation is Aquila, also known as the Eagle. Aquila is a summer constellation best visible in the month of August. So here is Aquila. You can kind of trace your way through the stars. Um, if you'll look at the bright star at the base of the eagle's neck, that's Altair, one of the three points of an asterism called the Summer Triangle. Our other constellation turned the other way here is Cygnus the Swan. Cygnus is visible between the months of June and October, making it a summer constellation that actually dips into autumn. Here's Cygnus. Again, you can kind of trace your way through those stars. Um, this bright one off the t end of the tail of Cygnus is Deneb, another one of the points of the Summer Triangle. So rounded out by Vega up to the right, that makes our Summer Triangle, which I'll show you in just one second. So here is our summer triangle with Vega, 
and then down here to the right at the base of Aquila's neck is Altair. And then up to the left, this other bright one at the base of Cygnus's tail is Deneb. Really quickly, here's just the sources that I used here in this presentation. Thank you so much for watching the first installment of Creatures in Cosmos. Our next segment will be October 19th and the subject will be Things That Swim, where we cover all of the craziest creatures that live in the water and their celestial partners. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you all next Monday.